Well, it's all about racing here today on GMVN. We're in the south of France with the Canyon Factory race team. And we'll be taking a look at the Strive CFR. Now, if you recall, in 2019, Canyon featured quite prominently in the Enduro World Series with top five placings in both the men and the women. Dimitri Tordo and Flora Nicola in the men, and of course, Ines Toma in the women's. But it's this what we've come to see, the all new Strive CFR, one of the lightest in the range, and a bike that is designed for arguably one of the toughest sports in the world, Enduro. All the action and detail then here today from the Altmara team. Let's start off then with some of the highlights of this bike. Uh, beginning maybe with the wheels, 29 inch uh, zip carbon motor wheels. The drivetrain, fully electronic as too is the seat post. Now, when it comes to the amount of suspension on this bike, we've got 155 mil on the rear and 170 mil up front. It's a full carbon frame from front to rear, Plus, the big difference on this bike is the 300 gram saving on the frame alone. Canyon say this bike is optimized in both flex and stiffness. Plus, of course, one thing which is central to this Canyon bike, which is not on any other Canyon bike, and that is the shapeshifter technology, which means this bike can metamorphose between 135 mil and 155 mil. Now Canyon have very kindly invited us to ride this lightweight race machine with the Canyon factory team. Now, I mentioned earlier about metamorphosis and shape-shifting. Now, I'm about to be joined by someone who has actually transformed themselves over the years, sometimes good, sometimes not so good. A man who has won the 2004-2005 World Downhill Championship. He was the opening winner of the Enduro World Series in Punta Island 2013, actually on the first of the Strive bikes. A man then who is widely regarded as one of the great analysts of the sport. Fabian Barrao. You, you're being too nice. Thank you. <laughs> How are you well, still? I'm, you're good? <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, we're, we're talking racing today, Fabian. Yep. It's all about the fine margins, right? Yeah, it's correct. Like, I mean, from downhill all the way to enduro now, we're definitely calculating and trying to go as fine details to get our riders to perform. And uh, you can imagine that bike performance always been and always will be the key into downhill rail, enduro racing. Let's talk about the frame in a minute. Now, can I just ask you a question? Obviously, the Canyon Race team have access to bikes such as the Torque at 180 mil travel, mm -hmm. or maybe the Spectral at 160 mil travel. Why is it this bike? that the team focuses on to race? Well, this is the real enduro bike. As you say, you have the Spectral that is 140, that is yeah. the, the trail bike, fun yeah. bike to, to ride. Then you have the Torque that we would call the bike park bike where you can go and play with, etc. But the Strive is efficiency into the trail and where you're gonna bring the right combo for half hills, pedaling versus downhill efficiency. You got now, like especially on that new version, you got the 170 mil travel with, with 155 on the rear, which bring obviously an excellent balance and uh, about 66 degree at angle, 65 and a half now. So you can be very aggressive. And the all big news about the, this new frame is that we didn't develop um, a, a new carbon layer that gave us a better, you know, uh, optimization in terms of weight, but also in terms of stiff stiffness, as you said. So this is the big news. We've got a 300 gram weight saving on yep. this frame compared to the other Strive bikes. Now we talk, you know, the mountain bike industry loves talking about optimization. Yep. Uh, it's, some people say, yeah, stiffer the better, but it's not just about stiffness. It's, it's about the right balance between the right flex and the right stiffness because the rider after all, it, it impacts on the fatigue of a rider, right? If yep. the bike is too stiff, 
becomes very tiring to ride. You, you're totally right. Something that people need to keep in mind is that the overall mountain bike industry is also driven by price point. And sometimes what you will develop into racing is not always going into the final end consumer for the fact that it actually makes the bike too expensive. And um, in our case, we develop a certain carbon layer back in the days to be able to, to sell the bike, which is, which is already a super performant bike. And we did develop another one on racing that is now uh, accessible to the general public. And this this frame is definitely different in terms of carbon labor. So it's all, both frames are in carbon, but the layup is different. Yeah. That is obviously optimizing the weight, as you say, for the 300 grams, but also provides the right amount of stiffness. So you, you do understand that if tomorrow I give a bike that is completely weak in frontal, stiffness you, you will you will have especially on the 20 29 inch wheels too much um, lack of control when it's the moment to put the bike in line but if tomorrow i bring too much lateral stiffness and you get into a corner where you have rough impact actually instead of driving speed into the corner you will actually slowing down by all the lateral forces that will engage especially on your rear wheel so the right amount of stiffness is from my perspective a, a front triangle that will provide the stability you need between the bottom bracket and the handlebar but you will looking at a certain lateral flexibility between the bb and the rear axle so this will allow a certain driving and the right amount of stiffness when it's moment of handling and that's what the optimization is there Like I said, the Frenchman is known for transforming himself. He's now Fabien the racer. <laughs> Fabien, uh, let's quickly talk about Shapeshifter. Now this yep. is an evolution of the system. Uh, Shapeshifter changes three things. It changes the travel, the sag, and also the geometry, right? Yes, you're totally correct. I mean, the, the, the point of the Shapeshifter is to mechanically change the kinematic that obviously completely offset the balance of the bike. You will have now with this new update version, no more need of synchronization of what's happening between the handlebar remote and the system itself. You just have to take care of pressing the click on and off button of the Shapeshifter and the bike will mechanically transform in one position or the other. Can you give us an insight into how uh, an enduro racer will use Shapeshifter during the day on the trails? So the, the most of your situation is when you arrive at the bottom of the downhill, it's the moment to go up, just press in open mode and you do your liaison. But there is also the efficiency once you get used to the system and obviously with the remote of the seat post, getting used to the overall manipulation, then you will use it into the stage. Like every single climb, punchy or even flatter terrain, you will bring the bike into uphill mode and reduce the travel that you will want. Yeah, and hence gaining those precious tenths of seconds. Yeah, and uh, I mean, clearly into, into racing, as you know, uh, once those guys are very dialed, I would say that if you're gonna use 10 times your gearing you might use five or six times your seat post and you probably use three or four times the shape shifter Right, Steve, this is a perfect opportunity just to click the bike in uphill mode. Click it. There we go, saddle down and you can keep it uphill mode, just the way it is. Now there's a few nifty bits of tech that come as part of the Strive CFR package. First of all is the TyreWiz. Now TyreWiz monitors air pressure real time and relays this information back to your smartphone or your computer on your bike. Now obviously tire pressure is important for many reasons such as rolling resistance, traction and of course rider control. So you can actually make some really accurate decisions while you're out on the trail. Now another bit of tech again which comes as part of that Strive CFR package is the ShockWiz. Now the ShockWiz records and evaluates suspension performance every time you ride your bike. And remember, all that information can then be available to you on a special ShockWiz app. It's recording such things as the air pressure, as the spring rate, as compression and rebound. So it enables you to get the optimum, the spot on setup, which sometimes can be quite difficult on a mountain bike. Woo! 
Uh, Fabian, can we just talk a minute about geometry and sizing and how that impacts the performance of an enduro race bike? Now, I know that you've been part of the longer front center uh, scene many years ago, but ultimately on an enduro bike, you need a bike that's maneuverable in a range of circumstances because this bike is 470 millimeter reach, which I'm 185 and I do believe you are. 188. Yep. So would you say that's the right size? Yes, yeah, so just... the, the bike you're riding now is a Lodge, yeah. which is the same as I do. And uh, for sure, I, I've been pushing a lot of people to get a longer front center to be able to bring the gravity masses more towards the front wheel, get a better control and better handling and, and a better stability when you're riding. Now, taking in consideration that wheel size also change, you do have a ratio that has been changing and you do need to find the right compromise and not go over long, especially in enduro being on very small small trails and tight turns and tight trees to find the right compromises. So I would say that the Lodge is definitely doing the work until 185 and 187. And when you start to be above this height, you surely need to start thinking about the XL. Now, the Zip Moto technology, essentially this means that the rim rotates on the spoke bed, which means more compliance, more traction in rough corners, smoother through rocky terrain, plus, of course, lower tire pressures and less rider fatigue. Now, of course, it doesn't just lie in the wheels or the tires, or indeed the balanced frame design. There's other things as well, such as the suspension design on this bike. It's three phase, it goes from sensitive to stable to progressive. Canyon say that means loads of grip in the corners, great mid-stroke support, plus of course, something to pop off to get over those roots and rocks. CFR then comes in two models. One is the Shimano equipped CFR bike, and then there is the SRAM limited collective version of the bike. Both weigh in around about 13 to 14 kilos. Right, some of the detail, full internal cable routing, down tube protector, chainstay protector, room for a water bottle, four sizes from small to extra large. Remember, we've got the SRAM axis electronic gearing, plus of course, those Moto carbon wheels. Well, an interesting insight there into the development of the Strive CFR with Fabian Burrell. Now, if you wanna see an even more nerdy version of the standard version of the Strive, have a look at the video Doddy's done. Uh, and some more details of the first version of this bike with the Don and his comparison with his predecessor, and leave that video down there. So I think I'm gonna just knock it into, or should I say, click it or clack it into down mode and get back to the cafe.